Hey guys, I'm Chris. Today I want to do a weapon overview on one of my electric blowback rifles from Tokyo Marui. This is one of the SOCOM versions. You probably the soft mod is the more commonly used name. This is the front wired version rather than having the battery up in the stock over here. I've actually covered this rifle a little while ago. I did a video. It was quite some time back, but I, uh, I used used a very old camera that was only filmed in standard definition. The, the actual quality of the video in terms of in terms of the, the footage the footage itself that the camera captured is really not very high at all. It's very grainy, the colours aren't very good. It's very low resolution whereas today I'm gonna to be doing full 1080p. So yeah, I'm gonna be over the next few days I've got a few a couple of these electric blowback rifles and I'll be doing an overview on the ones I have. So this is the first one that I got many, many years ago. Did a lot of work on it as you can see. So we're going to start with this one, I'm going to move the camera around and uh, we'll take a look at overview of some of the, the features and the parts that I've got onto it. Okay, so we'll start from the stock end and work forward. This is the Magpul PTS ACS in an olive drab. All I've done, it probably looks a bit strange, all I've done is removed the tubes on the side here which would uh, you could normally use to hold like CR123As. I didn't need them for that battery storage, so I took them off. Very solid stock. Only slight problem with these TV, TM EBB guns is that the friction lock, because the holes in the underside of the buffer tube are slightly too small, the the actual pin here that secures the stock in place can't go. If you see that, you see the way the lever there can still move further up. The pin doesn't go all the way in as it perhaps should, so the friction lock also can't fully engage. But even despite that, there's basically no wobble in it, so that's nice. Good thing, another thing about this stock is, as you'll see in a minute up on the handguard that I've got on this rifle, it has a storage compartment inside. All I've done is put some bubble wrap in there just to stop this QD sling swivel sort of racket, sort of uh, rocking around, bouncing about and making too much noise and racket whenever I run. So that's a handy little storage feature there. So standard buffer tube, I've not upgraded that, that works just fine. Standard recoil weights in the castle mark there. Got the PTS ASAP for a GBB rifle. Now what you have to do on these, if you want to fit them to these electric blowback guns, is take a Dremel to the inside and to these portions here, just on the inside where it touched the gun. And as you can see, mine's sort of scratched up a bit there where I've um, been a bit too heavy with the Dremel work, but it, it fits on and it's absolutely rock solid on there now. Very, very good sling point, enables you to switch shoulders very easily. Pistol grip, Magpul PTS Myad. I've got the larger back strap on here. You want to get the upgraded metal base plate, otherwise you can run into problems. But you can modify the stock one, um, but it's, I find it best to get the metal one because otherwise the motor will sit too high up in the rifle and it just basically won't function the gearbox. So yeah, Myad. Apple PTS trigger guard, very comfortable, fills in that little gap you get there with the standard USGI type trigger guards. Does take a little bit of modding, I had to take a drill to the, uh, the hole at the front end here in order to get it to fit on, but it wasn't too tricky of a job to do. Receiver, upper and lower are all standard, as is the copper handle. Magazine, I've just for the for the sake of the video, I've just put in one of the Magpul PTS P mags that are for these EVB rifles. You can see it's got a little actuating lever there. I've not tested it in this uh, particular rifle yet, as you, you might have seen on the channel before. I had a few problems with these, but I'm going to give it a test in this particular gun. It seems to fit better than it did in my Scar L, so I'm going to try it out in this SOCOM here uh, at some point soon and let you guys know how I get along with that, see if it it engages the, uh, the bolt catch correctly as it should do. Optic, I've just, for the sake of the video, I've just put uh, a replica Elcan Spectre up, up on there. This is a fixed four times version. As you can see, there should be a lever here if it was a real one. This one doesn't have it. The good, great thing about these is you get a very wide field of view and you get a good eye relief. You can set your, uh, your eye wherever you want to. Only problem is they weigh a lot, I and mean, because of the, the metal handguard on here, this is a fairly weighty gun considering it's just a 14 and a half inch carbine. But moving forward, 
handguard itself. Because I built this gun a very long time ago, I was still using NIMH type batteries. And I wanted to be able to have a railed fore end and still be able to store those batteries in the fore end. That's where this CASV replica, this is King Arms replica. I'll bring that a bit closer so you can hopefully be able to read. And see, they've replicated the actual trademarks from Voltor there pretty well. It is a nice handguard. As I say, if, you, if for some reason you have you are still living in the dark ages and you don't use lipos, <clears throat> then if you want to have a battery up front and still be able to have a railed section up here, you can put you know a, a light or a pet box up on here as well as a, a switch, maybe you know, different options. And you can all these holes throughout you can bolt. It'll be supplied with little sections of wrist rail, so you can bolt things on there. Now this particular version, you can. It come, like when I say when it comes with a few different sections of rail on this area at the front of the monolithic 12 o'clock rail you can either fit another small piece of wrist or you can fit this folding front sight up on the sight it seemed a bit pointless to me to fit a wrist and then fit a sight when you get a free sight with the handguard one thing I did miss earlier actually the rear sight this is a GMP replica of the Troy folding backup iron sight very nice co-witnesses nicely with the front. So yeah, that's the, that's the King Arms CASV, replica of the Voltor. Obviously an olive draft to match the rest of the furniture. Got a got the, the TM gas tube, dummy gas tube still inside there. Underneath the rail, hoping I'm gonna be able to show you this. This is a just a dummy low profile gas block. I think it's a, I think it's a very old GMP version. Essentially it's the same as your standard front sight block slash sort of triangular iron sight USGI type, just with the actual iron sight part chopped off. So it fits nicely, holds the gas tube in place and obviously fits under this handguard. Barrel it's the standard TM 14 and a half inch barrel with the stock. A2 birdcase flash hider. I did used to have a different one on there, but I think I, I took it off and put it on a different gun. So there we have it. That is the that is my first foray into the world of electric blowback guns from Tokyo Marui. I love these things overall. I think you've got, you know, I always look at it as a scale. You've got AEGs at one end, standard AEGs, you've got GBB rifles at the other end, and these things are bang in the middle. You get, you get that sensation, you get a little bit of recoil, you get a nice sounding blowback mechanism inside the gearbox, you get that bolt lock feature as long as you use the mid cap magazines or these PTS ones. But it runs on a battery and you don't have to worry about the cold. Well, <laughs> I say that. The thing with this metal handguard is even batteries, if batteries get cold, they will it will really diminish their performance. So this metal handguard can be a problem. Obviously metal conducts heat much better. So when it's cold, the battery inside this handguard will get really cold and that can affect it. So I wouldn't probably use this particular gun in the winter so much. Although I've not tried it with, with lipos. I've only tried it at a skirmish with my uh, with old batteries, with old nickel metal hydride. So I can't, I'm not 100% either way on how that would work. But overall, it, it's heavy, it's a bit, nowadays, the actual design philosophy is a bit old school. You know, it's only a carbine length gas system up here. Um, you know, you, you probably run a slimmer, lighter weight handguard these days. But I still like it. Like I say, it was my first, first venture into this whole electric blowback series. I had fun sort of doing the work on it. I'm not sure if King Arms make these handguards anymore, but I think it does look cool even even these days. And uh, and yeah, I would probably I think over my whole time airsoft in when I did get this thing, it was uh, probably one of my favourite purchases. I have to say, it was a really big step up from from all the standard AEGs I've been using up to that point. So there we have it, guys. Cheers for watching. Hope you've been, hope enjoyed this. Like I say, I'm going to be doing my other electric blowback series 
M4s from TM over the coming days, so keep an eye out for those. Cheers for all the subs and all the thumbs up and all that stuff. I do appreciate it, guys. I'll see you next time.